until such time as you pay back the money that you borrow. So interest costs become a component of the overall cost profile of a public authority. Now, as I said before, school districts are not normally allowed to do this. The situation you have here in District 35 is somewhat unique. It's the product of a variety of different circumstances that I won't go into because I think others will in greater detail as we get further into the evening. But the situation you have here is unique in the sense that you do have a major funding problem. It is becoming a deficit. You are engaged with the Ministry of Education in figuring out the deficit elimination plan, which, as, as far as I understand, is not a completed process at this point, but is a state of active ongoing negotiation. For the other districts in BC, most, if not almost all of the other districts, do not have deficits like that, but they do have shortfalls. They face chronic, persistent lack of revenue capacity in regards to the funding pressures that they experience on a routine basis. Now, what a shortfall actually means is that in order to deal with the fact revenue might be here, expenditure might be here, those two factors must be brought into balance. The only way that a school district authority can bring those two elements into balance is really two ways of doing it. You can either raise more revenue, and that will take you down the path of being involved in uh, international education. It'll take you down the path of school district charging higher fees to students and parents for things that they are still allowed to charge fees for. It could be school busing, it could be extracurricular activities, it could be a host of different things in that area. It will take you down the path of school districts uh, looking to charge more money for continuing education programs that are not part of the core educational offerings, uh, so on and so forth. School districts' abilities to raise money are quite limited. In this province, less than 5% of all money paid in support of public education comes from such activities. Uh, so the capacity of a school district is very, very limited to raise additional money. 95% of revenue comes from the province in the form of provincial grant. So raising additional revenue was one way of dealing with the structural funding shortfall. The other way, and which is by far and away the most predominant option that's available to school districts and boards of education is to cut spending. Cutting spending because our public schools are very labor intensive uh, systems involves typically cutting programs, cutting staff, cut, uh, in so doing cutting salary and benefit expenditure, seeking out if possible efficiencies in other areas of school district spending. So that's basically the premise that I start from. The idea of a structural funding shortfall means that districts typically lack the capacity or ability under the law to roll their debts forward in time from one year to the next. They must bring revenue and expenditure into balance in a particular year. And to do so, they must, in many cases, uh, make very, very hard choices in regards to uh, reductions in staffing and programming and other areas of district expenditure. Now the question emerges, you just want to take a quick look at, uh, in the recent media, and these are just media reports, and this is not a, this is not a random sample of BC's 60 uh, school districts. There's a dozen districts up here. Based upon recent information, uh, we can see, if you look at the list here, that those 12 districts, which is a mixture of urban, rural districts, northern districts, districts in the south, um, those districts alone are looking at anywhere from 74 to close to $100 million shortfall in the coming year. If you extrapolate this group up to including all of the districts in BC, the, late, the, the degree of the shortfall rises probably in the vicinity of $300 million. That's a figure provided, uh, corroborated by the school district secretary treasurer's organization in, it, in some of its recent uh, public statements to the media. So this gives you an idea, just a, a not a random sample, but an overall uh, rather haphazard sample, I guess I can say, 
uh, drawn out of recent media reports. This is a very general problem. It's a problem where I would suggest virtually no school district in British Columbia is exempt from these days. The, pro the problem of uh, funding shortfalls are chronic, they're persistent, and they're very deep. And the consequences of them will be very profound as we move closer to the coming school year. Thank you. 